you know, along came a couple of songs, and then we said, hey, let's get a bass player. It's kind of went from there. Got Dave. Yeah, my name's Dave Arbus. I'm originally from Detroit. I moved to Denver in the 90s, and I actually moved to Breckenridge, and I moved up here to get in more in the music. Uh, Breckenridge scene was a little small, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, I came down here and played in a couple bands and enjoyed it, been playing bass uh, for everybody, you know, and I just really liked it and joined with, with these guys and started writing some lyrics and really kind of hit it off and we have a good time together and it's the first band I've had a really good relationship, uh, reliable friendship more than anything, you know, so it's like a real solid feeling other than the music. And the music's just kind of evolving right now. We're getting ready to record an EP and, um, you know, really that's pretty much how we're getting out of Denver sound-wise. Um, you know, we've played probably 40-some local shows this year as our first year. And ironically, today's the 11th of November, and I considered the 11th of 11 um, the first uh, day of our our band's existence, so it's actually almost an anniversary today. Happy anniversary. Hey, Happy thanks. anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Where's my card? Yeah. Diamond, <laughs> diamond ring. Kissing that rose. You guys are going to be playing um, Harvest Fest on November 25th, and can you tell us a little bit about what uh, people can expect from you guys there? Well, yeah, you know, I, mean, I think we're really excited to play with all these bands. We've friends with a lot of them and um, the Dem it's pretty much a good example of what Denver has to offer as far as metal goes. You know, Cephal Carnage being, you know, maybe the the overlords of of the whole scene, you know, they're pretty much the most successful band that I know of Denver putting yeah, out. Death you know, metal wise. Death metal for sure, you know, and uh, you know, we're really happy to be out there and we're definitely gonna be full on excited to be on that stage and pumping for you know bunch of fans that are really going to appreciate this kind of music too, you know. I think that's a big one for us. And is your set, how long is your set going to be, do you know? Um, well, if they give us 40 minutes, we're going to do a 40 minute set. Okay. Um, we have a little more material if we have to, or a little less, you know, we can trim it down. Um, I'm not sure they haven't let us know this time slots yet. Right. So um, definitely 40 minutes is a general set for us. Um, kind of get sweaty and move out, you know. It's, it's, about 40 minutes into it, we're pretty much <laughs> kicking the up. Yeah, we kind of like to dial in another song if we could into there. You know, it's a newer song that we've been working on for a little bit, so our songs last at least four or five minutes for the most part. But yeah, it'd be great if we could get that other song in there if we have enough time. No epic kinda... power ballads yet. <laughs> 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 no keyboards required. No. Yeah, you know. Not this group. But, um, oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Um, if you were gonna, how would you describe Carnivorous Greed to a metal fan that doesn't know anything about you that you were trying to just give a quick, you know, trying to describe your sound basically? What would you, how would you do it? I think I'd probably have them come out to see a show. You know, we've kind of got some people to come out that aren't metal fans at all. And, you know, they, they come to appreciate, you know, the fact of, you know, you guys are doing good, you know, and Sounds good. we don't really particularly care for this music, but, you know, for what you guys are putting out and stuff, it's, it's a, we're getting a following to come along with us now. Yeah, you've got feeling, you know, some older, older folks, 60s, and yeah. come out and come to a more than one show. Really? It's been pretty interesting, yeah. yeah. Nice. And they're like some of the other bands as well, which is great, you know, you know, their eyes aren't closed as much as they would have been in the past, you know, so. Right. If I would have to pinpoint a genre of music, I would say we're on the death side of thrash metal. Okay. You know, um, definitely not, uh, you know, um, full on blast beat death metal, but we do have that incorporated in our sound. But uh, we're definitely big fans of the early thrash music, you know. Right. Old school. Old school. Older well, school, I, yeah. I would describe it as like this is old, older, older thrash. Yeah. You know, this Sepultura, this early era, that type of music. I mean, uh, a little on a political end of things too, you know, we definitely have some political views. I mean, who can't nowadays, you know, it's really, uh, and not generally American politics, but world politics. I just right. try to keep it about every day, not just about, you know, the satanic side or right. whatnot, so. Yeah. Right. I would call it Satanists. Yeah. <laughs> 
Unscathed reminded me of a Sodom, Sodom tune, actually. I was, I was, yeah, I we're a big I fan of that style yeah. of music. Yeah, yeah. And so. Destruction, yeah. Sodom, you know, I mean, definitely American metal, you know. We've had a few people uh, tell us it sounds like old school, you know, back in the 80s. So, you know, that's a good compliment. Yeah. That's music we grew up with, you know. Right. We love playing. We so. don't tune down, so that's a lot of the the style that we kind of kept, you know. Straight forward. Not that we're against it, but it's just kind of grew on us, you know, and the, you know, the chord structures and a standard tune guitar kind of fit with what we want to do, and I've just adjusted my vocals to it. Kind of like how Dave did bring that to the table, that, you know, he appreciated that I didn't really want to drop to D and whatnot, or lower, so. Right. We're not totally against it, though, you know, the future's it's unknown, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're definitely, you know, as far as the, the, the new things seem to be, it's not even new anymore, but, you know, going even below C, which is a... Uh, pretty heavy for the amps and for the vocalist, right. which is, makes the singing a little bit easier, I think, for me. Uh, but I don't think it really has that same dynamic. You know, the guitars are basically tuned for a certain area of tone. Right. And I think it really brings out the sound of the guitars, especially the guitar, you know, bass is um, bass, you know, so basically you're pushing not as much bass sound, but uh, it's a little more high pitched. Uh, you can, I can really get into the higher strings and you can hear it. I like that. Right. You mentioned old school 80s thrash being a, a kind of a focal sort of influence and, you know, aesthetic or whatever. And obviously thrash has really come back a lot in the last, you know, I don't know, five to seven years or however long it's been. A lot of the younger kids are getting into the old thrash and discovering the old thrash. So it seems like that a lot of them might appreciate it. Carnivorous Greed sound. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm a big yeah. fan of, I mean, I've been listening to a lot of stuff on a computer, you know, from from uh, Brazil and Italy and Israel and a lot of old, I mean, they even look like we did in high school, you know, with the, you know, jerseys and high top sneakers and, you know, I'm just like, wow, you know, I'm so excited that, you know, this I still appreciate it because for a while there, you know, it was, uh, I worked at a club in Detroit and a lot of bands were coming through and it was, uh, kind of lost the guitar solo aspect of music for a while and I was like, come on man, that's one of my favorite parts, you know? Right. You know, and now it's come back again and I think people appreciate it, you know? Yeah, you see a lot younger generation out of the older bands that have been around for a while, like Creator and whatnot, and <laughs> Destructions, and, you know, like we had mentioned, um, we just did the set in the garage, uh, Shrapnel Rain, they're a very young band and up and coming, and, uh, you know, they really appreciate what we're doing now as well, so. Yeah, they certainly turned my head. Oh, crazy. Yeah. yeah, they got a lot of energy, you know, it's like 16 year old energy is just like. Reminded me of me as you could harness we it. That age, you know, yeah. back in high school. That's yeah, excellent. Sure, so, yeah, they bring a lot of heart to the to the game, what, what's going on right now, you know? And right. It's all about the music, which is great. Yeah. So. We'll have to check those guys out too sometime. Yeah. That sounds sure. cool. Let's see. Um. <coughs> So let's see, uh, what would Carnivorous Greed music be a good soundtrack for? It's kind of a more fun question. <laughs> I, I kind of imagine one of our songs, you know, with a bunch of military, you know, like uh, clips, you know, like the, the big guns going off, you know, the, that kind of thing, you know, it's, especially American Revolution Part Two. you know, I mean, would pretty much feel like we're on the edge of that in this country. I mean, a couple things could tip that scale. I mean, I, from being from Michigan, I mean, there's some pretty serious people out there that are waiting for this thing to happen, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, kind of a soundtrack to war maybe, you know, but um, I wouldn't consider us, a, you know, we're not supporters of war and we're more or less anti-war, but we're observers. Just kind of, exactly. yeah, you know, well, like you said, it think of something about a militia or something like that you could kind of get that drawn out like that you know um you know and then you know horror stories you know basically the jack the ripper and whatnot you know everybody kind of is fascinated by the the murders or whatever or whatnot ha happened in the past and just uh i don't know we probably stay away from the comedy end because <laughs> what we do but <laughs> <laughs> yeah there is some funny <laughs> stuff in our music in your music we video. try to keep it you know or some, uh, some, a ghost movie. <laughs> you know, like I was saying earlier too, and like to be lighthearted about anything nowadays is kind of you know turning your cheek to a lot of what's going on in this world. Um, you know, 
just because we're not experiencing it here in Denver, um, there's some pretty serious things going on in this world, and you know, we're I'm affected by it lyrically, definitely. You know, I want to speak my mind in some way or another, but I also don't want to like drag these guys into my views as much. You know, but we are good friends, and we do share a lot of the same views about a lot of this. You know, especially destruction of the earth, and you know, uh, like I was saying, politics. You know, the idea of how people control the masses, and it's just a pretty wild thing. You know, you can watch us get hyped about who knows. You know, they whatever they want us to get hyped about. It seems like they can just get us going or calm us down. Like there's a war going on right now. You know, see people freaking out. But there are people dying in in horrific ways. Just not here. But they're not just passing away in their sleep, you know, unfortunately. But yeah, we'd like to be able to maybe express our opinions about that and hopefully, you know, people can um, maybe understand that. We're not trying to saying that it's cool. Yeah, movie wise though, like Anthony said, probably a horror movie. <laughs> you know, yeah. Something kind of yeah. Pretty fast paced more horror movie. Right, right. <laughs> you know, some chasing zombies, around with a some, knife, you know. Some, some zombie killing or something like that, you know. Wild animal attack yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Everyone would probably go back to the dead don't die or something old like that, you know. <laughs> so you guys are working on a recording, you yes. said? Yeah, we're uh keep kinda of putting it off just because of a schedule scheduling shows, um we're more or less willing to play a show. Um, and put aside the recording um, schedule. Uh, we'd rather play out and you know get our music out. We're still a new band, so uh, but also the recording is really important to us. We're going to be doing it ourselves, so we kind of got flexibility, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, we're expecting in the next month or two to have it finished. Hopefully, so maybe the very beginning of 2013. Is it going to be an EP or a full length? It'll or? be an EP. Okay. Yeah, uh, four or five songs. We haven't decided yet. Excellent. And will you, will you be distributing it yourself? Or are you going to have this for sale on iTunes or anything? Yeah, it'll it'll be available. It'll probably be free download, you know, and, or giveaway CDs. You know, I mean, we have a whole uh, long you know, LP planned um, in the future of next year. You know, we have enough material for it, um, and we have a whole schedule decided that we're going to do this. You know, but um, we want to have something now and yeah, so uh, something that's nice giveaway. Idea the price, you know, and then spend some money on an LP, you know, hopefully, you know, uh, get that done next year, too. So We got some other songs that we kind of are working on on our own right now that they're not all the way down, you know, we kind of want to take our time, make sure they're right, you know, instead of just putting out a bunch of noise, noise. so right. you know, make sure everybody's <laughs> happy with it, you know, and expect it all the time, not just some of the time, oh, well, they just wrote another song, sounds like the last song, so I want to kind of mix it up. Cool. Yeah, and we're going to incorporate different styles of songwriting in the next um, CD, too. So there's going to be actually have like a two separate eras. You know, we're going to have like the first year, I believe, is we're going to have the first EP, and then the second one's going to be a, a different style of songwriting. Uh, we'll be a little more involved with um, the riffing and stuff. Uh, I didn't get to do a lot of that in the first couple songs, you know, so I'm planning on helping out and doing a lot of the music writing with Greg and I think it has come off a little differently. <laughs> and Anthony, and Anthony. Well, oh, Anthony, of course. He's a big, yeah, he's got, he brings these incredible uh, songs up just by humming them to me and then yeah, I figure them out. I have so. something in my head and I'll tell, He'll tell me what he's know, thinking and we'll kind hum of... It, hum it and say, well, try, to, try to play this, you know, do the, you know. But, uh, well, we, me and him... We got those you know, all styled together and then they came along with the lyrics and... We're going to work it out a little bit different the next few, and uh, yeah, for the primary part I sit at home and try to play the guitar as much as I can and kind of hash those out by myself first, and then I, Dave's kind of come along at the end and kind of helped me along the way too, so it's, it's really helpful to have someone that has that type of knowledge other than someone just sits back, oh, what are we playing next? So yeah. all of us contributing is a, you know, it means a lot, so. We look forward to hearing that when it comes out. And being a three piece, it keeps it kind of simple too. You know, there's not too many different directions we can go. You know, right. you know, as far as like, you know, we're definitely not gonna um, be confused. I think you know, bigger bands. I, I just I've never really been in many more members than four. Right. And uh, I just see these guys that have six people on stage and just like just even calling everybody. 
trying to get something together this must be hard <laughs> you know I, I, I guess we're pretty lucky and we, it's yeah it, you know it's hard enough with three guys much less to have <laughs> out another guy in the mix and then everyone else it's, it gets to be turmoil but yeah you it's, got, it's, always got the middle man you got someone hey what are you talking about or it's hard to find good good band members you know it's, there's drama and you know problems and all that stuff but yeah I think we're pretty lucky He's, that's the way I feel, at least. Yeah, for sure, lucky. <laughs> it's, it's like being in a family. You have to you have to get along and collaborate. And totally. Help each other out. And stuff. Sacrifice. Sometimes women. you want to strangle your family, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it all works. It's worked out to be a good thing for us. And, you know, we just, uh, I think, you know, before we did the bar bar, like you had mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, we had just did Castle Ones, and that was a pretty good show for us. So. Excellent. You know, we had a good response for that. Uh, awesome. One of the bigger stages we played on. Nice, nice. It's a nice stage. Yeah, Cervantes is going to be fun, too. I can't wait for Harvest Fest. Yeah. Incredible. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, I'm ready. I am you know, could come quicker if it wants. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So we're pretty excited about getting up there and showing what we could do, you know, as, long as, as well as the other bands, you know. There's going to be a lot of good bands there. Yeah, know? it's a great lineup. We're really excited, too. Um, do you guys have any plans to tour at all, or? We do, we've kind of been waiting for uh, the right opportunity, um, you know, but we definitely, I mean, we've gone out, out of city, you know, we've gone to Pueblo and this and that, and it's just way fun, you know, it's just really fun to see a whole bunch of totally different faces and yeah. different places, and I, that's one of my favorite things about being in a band is to go other places and, and do what we do here, you know, right. <laughs> so it's like really a big desire of ours, you know. That's what we were talking about, just, uh, yeah, you know, our goals are, you know, we got them written down of what we want to do and how far we're going to take it. You know, we'd like to just maybe do like a week, two-week tour and like get, get, get our little um, EP out so people could, when we leave, they're going to know what we sounded like. And then you get at a bar and you forget everything that happened the night before and you're drinking or whatever, but this way they got a remembrance of us and, you know, hey, we like these guys. And, yeah, so we're kind of them, so. searching out that opportunity. We just, yeah, we got to get. We're we're just trying to get through the year, I think, and then we're going to sit down and we're going to get that recorded so we can talk about when we could get out. You know, like to head down to New Mexico and whatnot, and just do like a little mini tour or something by ourselves. And Excellent. See if we can't. Well, we saw some bands come a while back that you know they kind of just hop down and get to bars and they're just kind of promoting themselves. So right. you know if that's what it's going to take, that's what we'll do. Right. We kind of do have a good network of friends in this city, though, you know, and a lot of bands that do take off, you know, and come back, uh, you know, we're definitely involved with seeking it out, you know, and um, eventually I think we're going to have somewhere where we can just go ahead and get on a tour with, you know, a friend's band and kind of jump around with them, and I think that's a little more of a safer route than, you know, trying to do it on your own, and, you know, it's just kind of especially in the winter we definitely want it though yeah yeah you know you just don't want yeah, to have a breakdown somewhere in the middle of wyoming and and yeah we're not gonna find like three to frozen out. guys in the van <laughs> 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 with instruments yeah, you know. they had some cds they sounded pretty good they didn't make it that far yeah what would be like a dream tour lineup for you to be a part of a dream tour lineup? Yeah, just, you know, yeah, know it's kind of wild, you know. <laughs> Sabbath, that would be cool. <laughs> any of the big, any, the big European festivals that you see all the bands and all the crowds, just yeah. like there's thousands upon thousands of people jumping up and down, you know, that would be... Yeah, they're like awesome. the Wacken Festival and... You know, those types of shows just look like they got to be the uh, real fun. Like the, Even if you played on you a know. small stage, you know, you're there and whatnot. It was just, that would be a dream to me, to make it over to Europe and play. Yeah, well, I mean, and, you know, I mean, just to experience, you know, the the European thing, too, you know, because they're super metalheads out there, too. It's just, I, mean, it's, I was amazed on seeing maybe, uh, you know, just obscure bands play out there and, you know, and just really blow my mind. But um, yeah, definitely one of those kind of tours for sure. Yeah, so, yeah, no, just to be out there with all the big bands would be great, you know. The bands that we grew up with, you know, like the Sabbaths and Maiden, the Slayers and oh, the Maidens yeah, Maiden, and whoever you know. was out there that, you know, we all grew up with. Yeah, great. his voice is Super Maiden fan. <laughs> nice.
<clears throat> Without Can't her, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Had to throw that out there. So, can you share like a really good carnivorous greed story with us? Like a just like a like a carnivorous greed got, moment. I got one. Uh, one night we we were um, Greg's out of area in his backyard where he's he's got this huge pool, <laughs> and uh, we it just got done practicing and you know just winding down, just kicking back in the backyard, and he grabs a knife because it had a little couple of rips in it, and he grabbed this knife and cut the side of it, and it just the water just went <sighs> everywhere. It was like a tsunami in, in the backyard, pushed all the rocks up on the on his back yeah. porch. And, like Dave thousand, shut the door like to the garage. Yeah, yeah, I got chased by the wave. I ran the in the garage and shut the garage door and it's the way the water. In the, it was getting ready to go in the garage, so it was pretty funny. Yeah. His whole backyard was just, you know, 5,000 gallons of water. You know? Yeah, the rocks. And then it just... <laughs> well, we had a cell phone camera going, but uh, yeah, after the just, mayhem, it was just a bunch of mess. <laughs> you could hear us yelling and screaming and running, but yeah, it was a pretty big pool. And it was just kind of squirting out at first, and then it just went, boom! <laughs> yeah, we should have got that on YouTube. I got, I got, actually, I got it videotaped on my phone. But, uh, yeah, that was like, so he I ran with it. Put it on there. As far as like, yeah, at, at shows, yeah, we got some friends that are that we've kind of come to know that they come to the shows a little bit more. and Yeah, you know, we meet some good people. Uh, so it's, far, it's been it's super fun. You yeah. know, I mean, super supportive. Like, everyone's basically uh, happy to be in Denver, you know, and that's kind of a cool thing, you know, I'm from Detroit and, you know, there's a great music scene there, of course, but the people, you know, uh, man, it's hard out there right now for everyone, and, you know, Denver seems to be this place that everyone likes to be here, you know, that's kind of a really big side of everything. They're going to want to be here more now that uh, 64 passed. So. Oh, yeah, you know, that's going to be <laughs> a desperate plus to, for everything. Younger kids coming up and, you know, unusual it's never happened to me before but asking for our autographs and stuff which was great you know and that that, that meant a lot to me yeah that's great yeah, so it's pretty wild that's you know, really so, cool yeah. so yeah that was a good moment you know um, but it's fun you know you get the younger kids even though they they kind of get a short set or whatever and you know but with us just getting started again it's like we were all starting all over so we had we have to pay our dues you know we're not Expecting anything other than to do so, so we get the earlier slots, and you know we make we make it count when we can, and you know the kids that have come on after us, and they, and then they open up for us, you know they're right there rocking out and stuff too, so that's great, you know, and get the kids and get them going, and it's yeah. you know there's just a big connection now. Like I said, yeah, yeah especially those 16 and up shows, you know, it's just awesome, you know, it's like yeah, a bunch of mosh pitters, and good stuff, you know, all the guys our age are like. <laughs> Yeah. We, we Stiffen up after it. the first song. <laughs> you know, there was the and we, we try to get out and support as much as we can. Don't get me wrong. So you know. yeah, that's another thing that's kind of hard for some of us. You know, so especially <laughs> sometimes is to go out all the time. You know, I'm not. You know, I, I like, I love going out to see shows, but to see them, you know, three or four times a week is about as much as I can go out. And actually, it's becoming this bigger scene. So, you know. I missed in Detroit. It was you know seven days a week, right. after hours too. You know, let's just go see these punk bands and metal bands, and it's incredible. And uh, Denver's starting to turn its face, you know, and really have a lot of a uh, decent scene, you know, which There's is a lot of good bands that have gotten signed. And like I said, well. just all part of the feeling lucky part, you know. Like we're here for another surge of metal. Yeah, right. because w way back when it was tough to get a, a gig anywhere, you know, when we first moved up here. You're basically playing in a house or a garage or a warehouse, you know, and the parties were kind of far and in between because the cops would raid, and now <laughs> all the bars are welcoming everyone in, which is a good thing and a good feeling, you know. Oh, yeah. Don't have to worry about the cops coming in. <laughs> Everybody out! It took the bands that are, you know, the main stage, like Sofalic, to kick the doors down and kind of get the get some of that stuff going, you know, which right. is great. You know, they paid their dues, they've been around the world and, you know, yeah. props, you know. Real proud of those guys, you know, They're like our, like our mentors, you know. Actually, Leonard baptized my uh, oldest daughter. That's, you know, he practically, practically lived with us, me and my wife actually, you know, because for years and years, me and Leonard were, were tied, but, you know, uh, they, he deserves it, you know. He, He's busted his butt for, for everything he's got, so yeah. proud of him. 
He's a good guy. Yeah, he's real cool. Cool people. He's funny as hell. That's helping. <laughs> you know, he's supporting us and backing us. You know, with what we're doing as well. You know, trying to get going again. Kind of like you said, let it go by the wayside. And we're back and hopefully. Yeah, Greg hurt his head. Us. Right in the beginning, we started playing shows, and Greg fell on the ice and got a real bad head injury, and we had to cancel a couple months worth of shows, and it was hard on us because um, we just started making these relationships with promoters, and uh, all of a sudden had to cancel. I don't know how many shows we had to cancel, and it was like, it was, yeah, it was felt really weird, you know, like sorry, you know, it does sounds like a fabricated story, but really our dream guitarist can't even see straight right now. Just look at him, just look at him. Yeah, just yeah. look at him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's still, he's still all whacked out. Yeah, yeah. He still is. Yeah. We're still, we're still waiting for him to recover. Yeah, I'm still playing the wrong riffs when I'm supposed to be playing doing something else. You know, I thought I played it like that before. I need to do that. Well, is there anything else you guys would like to add? Oh man, other than the fact that we're really happy to be here and, and uh, ready to just slay at Harvest Fest and be part of that whole thing, you know. I mean, we're the biggest fans as as we are musicians, you know. It's like it's excited to see all these bands together. It's gonna be a real fun show, I think. Yeah, we're really excited too. We're very honored to be to be part of it as well. So oh yeah, we're happy you guys came down. So yeah, cool. well, thank you, thank you guys very much for having us over yeah. and thank you. Us watch your practice and stuff and. We look forward to Harvest Fest. Yeah, anytime. Anytime. Yes. anytime. <laughs> All right. Definitely. Thanks, guys. Thanks. I didn't realize Ron had a black Sabbath shirt on. <laughs>